All right. Today we are joined by Stephanie Yoon. She is a graduate of 2008. Um, she is currently serving as the Director of Strategic Planning and Chief of Staff to the Chief Technology Officer at American Express. Prior to working at American Express, uh, Stephanie worked for the Office of the First Lady, Michelle Obama, Save the Children US, Hillary for America, the Clinton Foundation, and other notable organizations and businesses. Stephanie is a mentor in the College of the Liberal Arts Alumni Mentor Program. In 2019, she received the inaugural Outstanding Young French and Francophone Studies Alumni Award. Congratulations, Stephanie. The award recognizes young alumni for success and influence as leaders, for significant career achievements, and for being outstanding role models for current students. So we're so grateful to have you here to talk about this very subject in your own career journey. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Katie, and thank you everyone for joining. I really appreciate this opportunity to speak with you all today. I'm really excited about the next uh, 45 minutes or so that we have together. So I'll just go ahead and get started. I'm going to assume you can see my screen unless Katie stops me. So to begin, I just want to give you a quick overview of what my time at Penn State was like. Go Nittany Lions! <laughs> Still a huge, huge opponent. Uh, forever will bleed blue and white. I was a triple major in college. I couldn't really figure out what it is exactly I wanted to do. I don't know if that resonates with anybody on the call, but I started my college journey wanting to go into advertising. I wanted to work in global business. And that led me to wanting to get a degree in French, which was a language and culture I was very passionate about. And then finally, I thought let's round it out with a third major in international studies, which uh, really enabled me to explore not only global opportunities on campus, but it allowed me to pursue a semester abroad in Paris. In terms of extracurriculars, uh, I won't read out all the specifics, but I joined some community networks to uh, allow me to not only enhance my personal network, but really get to know other people I wouldn't have gotten a chance to meet if I wasn't part of um, these organizations. So that's just a quick backgrounder on my time at PSU. In terms of what came next after college, uh, as Katie mentioned, I graduated in 2008. And for those who are old enough to know what 2008 was like, it was the brink of our financial crisis. I mean, needless to say, there were challenges to looking for a job. I spent six months really aggressively pursuing um, even internships, paid or unpaid, and I couldn't secure anything because by the time I graduated, I shifted my career goals in wanting to work not in global business, but in public service. So I listed out some of the areas um, that took my attention away as I started pursuing a new career goal. And in fact, I decided to pursue a graduate degree in international law, which is what allowed me to uh, pursue some of these other options. Without the experience in public service, it was very difficult for me to put anything on paper and even get an interview for unpaid internships. So I went that graduate school route. Now to go into uh, what I learned in terms of the jobs uh, that were listed, it, it really focused on expanding my network while also continuing to develop both personally and professionally. And by that, I mean, with each job, you have the opportunity to brand yourself. Uh, something I've learned while working in public service specifically is that your brand is going to follow you <laughs> after your first gig. So not to put pressure on people who may uh, not have already had a first time professional opportunity, but it's really just to emphasize for you how important it is uh, from the very beginning to establish a strong reputation and brand for yourself. It will only benefit you in the long term. And that goes into my final point about learning from uh, the successes I had, as well as the challenges I faced because 
there were a many, and I'm happy to go into details on that during the Q&A portion. Uh, I highlight this experience I had with Secretary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign for a couple of reasons. Namely, I had been such a proponent of Secretary Clinton ever since her first lady days in the White House in the 90s. So that's why I emphasize that this was a 10 year dream in the making. I had always wanted to work for her in a paid or even unpaid capacity. So it was a true honor. Um, also, as, as we all know, the campaign did not end the way at least my team and I thought it would end. So it really taught me about uh, the art of resiliency and being able to shift yet again, uh, a career focus, a career goal and finding a new dream. And that's really what led me to having this mindset, which I imagine many of you have right now in these unprecedented times. It's really important to be PFR, patient, flexible and resilient when you're on the job search. Whether times are great, whether times are difficult, uh, it's, it's a humbling opportunity for you to know that as you are on the search for a job, an internship, a career path, a goal, uh, to keep this mentality. And that is what will take you further than being, let's say, overly confident or overly zealous. Happy to go into details on what I mean by that again during the Q&A portion. So um, to really emphasize my biggest lesson learned throughout my career and throughout all of the opportunities I have been very grateful to have, it comes down to knowing that no job is too big or too small. And by that, I mean, I've been an intern, I've been an assistant, I've been a director, and now, um, you know, I basically run America. No, no, I won't say that. I forgot that this is being recorded. <laughs> uh, but either way, regardless of what your title is and what your responsibilities entail, every single task and contact you come across will very much uh, help in finding or uh, consolidating or solidifying your next career opportunity. Um, and I held on to that mentality from the very beginning stages uh, of my career, even from my Penn State days, which has been incredibly helpful. And I hope that could be a valuable lesson for the people on this call. Um, finally, I'll, I'll go into the fact that because 2016 campaign results were not in my favor or in my humble opinion in the country's favor, uh, it was time to really find a new career goal and shift my mentality in terms of what I can do with my transferable skill sets. And that's what took me uh, on the current journey I am on. I am now in the corporate sector, something I didn't imagine would happen this soon in my career, <laughs> but I am very grateful for the opportunity, very humbled by the experience. I'm still learning a lot to this day, and I've been at American Express since, since 2018. And I won't read um, these, these lines, but I just wanted to pinpoint these areas that allowed me to not only mm, stay hopeful in my job, because coming from the public sector, going into corporate America, that in itself was a mental shift, but also finding ways to keep myself inspired and motivated on this new journey in this new sector. Um, so happy to now open up for q and I like to keep everything as a dialogue. I feel that's the best way to learn. And Katie, I'll go back over to you. Sure. Thank you, Stephanie, so much for uh, sharing your career journey with us. It's a great foundation to lead into discussion now. For the students on, on the call, you're welcome to unmute and uh, turn your camera on and ask Stephanie a question um, or send me something in the chat as well. Um, but to start, um, you mentioned 2008 and I, I, it was a rough year. <laughs> it was a rough time. Um, what is your advice to our students now as they're trying to find internships and jobs? Um, can you just speak a little detail and some resources you think might be beneficial for them to be exploring? 
Of course. So the first resource I will note is Katie, not to put more work on Katie, <laughs> but Katie and her team, uh, please rely on the existing resources. To be quite frank, you know, that's what you are paying for. Your education at Penn State is going to be invaluable enough, including uh, the classes you've taken, the, the people you have met, the friends you have made, but the career network that your school has to offer is a strong foundation to build on itself. In fact, my connection with my alma mater is what led me to the first lady's office. So you really never know how, um, how your existing structure can allow you to move on to your next opportunity. Great answer. Give a pause for anyone who'd like to say anything. Um, and I can ask a million questions. Um, and I thank you so much for the plug. I really do. <laughs> um, when it, you going from, you know, the two very different industries you did, how did you do it? What, what do you give credit to making that change? You know, our liberal arts students um, in our office, we're constantly, you know, celebrating their transferable skills, celebrating the fact that they can do, I can make an argument, they can do anything they want. You know, how is it as where you were to now being at this executive level, what, what were the top two, three pieces that helped you to make that, that journey? Yeah, that's a great question. So the shift in itself, I, I won't, you know, I won't cut corners. It, it was challenging. Um, for me, I started out with my network when the campaign ended. Um, it, it was not an easy time to be someone in that political affiliation. And I don't want to go too much into politics. But uh, at that point, we had not only lost the White House, but and when I say we, um, I mean the Democratic Party lost the White House in addition to the House. So now not only are my peers and I looking for work, but uh, a lot of the people in the same area were jobless. That led to all of us scrambling and looking for something that would be conducive to our long-term career goals without the, the White House gig we all expected to, to get. Um, but it also led to people connecting with, with folks they may not have necessarily connected with um, for career aspirations. I went through my LinkedIn uh, contacts. I went through my Gmail contacts. I think I sent over 200 emails <laughs> over the course of a month once I was emotionally ready to look for a new job. And that's something I'll actually include as a side note. Uh, don't rush into things when you're making a transition because I think it's as important to take time for yourself and make sure that you are feeling ready and prepared for that next opportunity before really rushing into um, your gig, especially when you're in the nascent stage of your career, which applies to everyone on this call. Mm -hmm. um, the, the second point I'll make is as I was networking, what I would really advise people to see is please be intentional with any informational interviews you are um, able to confirm. Because for me, in the very beginning stages of my career, I wasn't given that guidance. And sometimes I would schedule a coffee chat with a very valuable person who could enhance my network and my career aspirations. But I focused the career chat or the coffee chat on the individual, asking them about their career journey. And by the end of the conversation, I didn't get anything substantive in, in terms of my ask. So as helpful as it was to hear about their journey, it didn't lead to anything substantive for me in terms of my next steps. So if you're intentional, write down, I advise, what you want that uh, career chat to, um, for any couple of outcomes you expect to get out of that conversation. And I think that could be much more fruitful for next steps. Absolutely. Informative informational interviews are such a key resource for students. I mean, I, I think in this status of student and the alumni pool of Penn State, it's it's a, a wonderful resource and everyone is willing to help and, and give back. And, and, and it's a great time to do that, especially given that 
a lot of people are home right now. Their, their, their commute looks a little different. Their time looks a little different. So definitely take advantage of that for sure. Some advice, we all know that we all support that networking is so very important. And Stephanie, thank you so much for being a part of our alumni mentor program. Um, obviously we'll put a plug into that for all the students on the line to definitely join, to be connected with someone as great as Stephanie. But what, what are you sharing with those undergrads and what are their, their common questions to you that could benefit the audience today? That's a great question. I, I think right now, so many questions are around uncertainty, uncertainty of the job market, uncertainty in terms of what they should eat, what college grads should be pursuing. Is it should I go uh, for my graduate degree? Uh, should it be something that I'd be willing to do unpaid if it's something I feel passionate about? Now, for me, it really comes down to personal choices. Um, I'll give you a quick anecdote to make it real for folks on this call. I had, I had highlighted my experience with uh, the 2016 campaign. When I decided to pursue that option, when she made the official announcement, I went berserk looking for people who are already on her campaign. Because as you can imagine, um, that infrastructure gets built prior to the announcement uh, being publicized. And I went to Iowa, the first state to caucus in the nation to work for this person for free as a 29 year old. <laughs> um, so all of my peers, as you can imagine, they were either in school. So what some of you may end up pursuing <laughs> if you wanna go into politics or, um, you know, either way, it, it was their first gig. And I made the personal decision to do that uh, because I felt so passionate about the opportunity it could lead to. It did eventually lead me to getting a full-time paid gig at her Brooklyn HQ, and that was an honor of a lifetime. But my point being, no one can predict what will happen. And so you can make a choice that is personally, that feels right for you, but also keep in mind that each gig, if we are so lucky, um, should enable you to uh, get your next gig. And I can say that gig is what helped me get to the one I have right now at American Express. Great, thank you so much. I, I have a question in the, um, in the chat box, one being how do I apply for an alumni mentor, which I will make sure to share that link with all of you through the chat box in just a second. Um, but the other question, and maybe you could speak to this through um, your experience, is around that of being a language, minor, uh, language major. Um, this uh, student is specifically Chinese, but how can they be using their language skills in a job setting that's not necessarily related to education or translation or interpretation? What, are, what other opportunities do you see out there for language majors? Yeah, sure. Uh, so for me, I haven't had the chance to use my uh, French degree in, in my roles. However, I know many people who have specifically, I'll just go into another anecdote, specifically when I was working at Save the Children, which is a, an NGO that is global, I had many peers who were using their French, Spanish, Chinese, um, and Arabic language degrees for when they went out to the field. So that's something I would advise. There's a lot of work in the field that you could do that doesn't pertain to education or ESL training. Um, and I think it's just what, what it comes down to is looking for opportunities where you can entrench yourself into that network. And that is most likely going to be through volunteer. I won't say most likely. In my experience, it was through volunteering. Um, for example, when I had friends who were volunteering for the UN or uh, World Bank Food Program, this is again when I was in the public sector, so it's a little different from my, my current um, career trajectory. Uh, and then they got their names known by, by, the, by the powers that be, and then that led them to full-time gigs where they could go out in the field and use their language skills. 
that's just a very specific example that I hope it's helpful. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. We have another question that popped up in the chat and also a note, I did just send the link to the Alumni Mentor Program website. There is a button there to apply. My colleague, Lauren Grenice is um, coordinating the program and uh, once an application is received, she then starts the ball rolling based on your major or your interest to connect you with an alumni uh, mentor in the college. So um, there's some time in the process, but the sooner you apply, the better um, would be a good idea. Okay, next question. What do you think has changed in regards to career growth and networking now that the majority of the workforce is virtual? Mm, yeah, it's an interesting question. And so twofold. One, honestly, it's a lot easier <laughs> to get time on people's calendars because uh, the world has slowed down. It has literally shut down. <laughs> so um, if you want to meet with people who you think may not necessarily have the time to meet you uh, meet with you on a regular basis, that certainly has shifted from what I can see. Um, the second part about it is it's become challenging because everything is virtual. Everyone is, again, I won't assume, I myself and a lot of the people I work with are very fatigued by this virtual environment, going from video meeting to video meeting to video meeting. So something I would advise just based on my personal experience if you do reach out to someone, e-connect with someone, and they are willing to give you the time, I would advise making it into a phone call or give them the option. Would you prefer a video chat or a phone call? Because these days, phone calls have become uh, less draining, so you will. And you want the person who is speaking with you on the other end to feel as little drained as possible, feel as energized as possible and excited to talk with you. Um, you know what, one more thing I'll add to that is, this probably goes without saying, but just be accommodating to the other person. But a quick pro tip, if you can get morning hours, that's always helpful. When I ask for coffee chats or informational interviews, I never schedule anything before 11 a.m. It's right before lunchtime. Uh, but it's also when their mind is the freshest and they'd be most will more willing to help you out in my experience, as opposed to when you go to them at the end of the day and they're already tired from the work day. Good idea. Very good idea. I think um, all of our students will echo the idea of Zoom fatigue and uh, agree with the phone call at this point. <laughs> so I, I've had a few um, students sign in in the last five, 10 minutes. We're so glad you're able to join us. Um, just want to point out that the session is being recorded so you could catch up later on our YouTube channel for what you might have missed. But just for logistic purposes, if you do have any questions um, you've just gotten here, please feel free to unmute or take your video off and ask, um, or you can add it into the chat and we'll read it off from there. Um, Stephanie, I, I wanted to go back again to the networking piece a little bit and, and ask you some resources for managing it. How are you managing your network um, and what's the best resource for students to do so? Mm, sure. Uh, so for me, I, I'll answer that within stages. When I was in the beginning stage of my career, I had to write down everything because I was meeting so many people um, and it was difficult to keep track. I would say uh, either handwritten, I know it's a little old school, or Excel is a fantastic way to track who you're speaking with and how they can specifically help you. I'm not saying that you should always be self-serving when it comes to networking, but at, at the beginning stages of your career, remember you're looking for resources that can help you jumpstart your career journey. Once you get to a certain point, you can be part of uh, the resource of helping others jumpstart their job and, and their career aspirations. So yes, I would say note-taking is a big piece. Um, Mid-career for me, it was doing regular check-ins. Uh, now in the non-virtual environment, I understand it was a little easier to do, but I would actually physically do um, coffee chats with people in my network. I would time the uh, ask very, at least what I saw very strategically, I would do it during holidays when it was less awkward to reach out to them to wish them a happy holiday. I would also um, 
keep regular communication with my contacts uh, to check in with them. I would set an alarm on my on my phone to check in with with some of my most important contacts every two months. And uh, it didn't seem mechanical. I always try to make it very natural, asking about. Uh, how they were doing, how their families were doing, and if they were gracious enough, they, they offered to do a phone call with me or to meet me in person. Nowadays, how I manage my networking is, it, it's been a bit more limited because in the, again, in the virtual environment, uh, challenges arise, but it's being, staying conscious and aware of who I should get to know in my current workplace. Um, but that will come along later in the later stages of the career. So I won't go too much into detail about that. Thank you so much. Um, I had another question, another great resource question in the um, chat, and that was for the YouTube page that I keep speaking about. So I did just add the playlist channel to um, the chat if everybody'd like to grab that um, and have for future reference. All of our events for the past year are located there um, if we were able to record. So there's a lot of great resources to check back on your own time. It's the Netflix of the Career Enrichment Network. So <laughs> um, another question for you um, as we wait for students to add more, Stephanie, is you mentioned graduate school and it kind of being a solution for you at the time. Um, we are seeing the same thing right now. And, and part of the reason we included a graduate school workshop yesterday as part of our career um, week. What is your advice for students who are considering graduate school, um, considering your two um, areas, industries, is it necessary? Um, how are you selecting it in the midst of everything and, and what could be the most impactful? Very broad question, so I, I apologize. <laughs> no apologies necessary, and I'll, I'll address Megan's question as well after I address that one. Okay. Um, so. For me, the, the choice to attend graduate school, it was a, both a practical reason and an ideal, I, idealistic, um, I, idealism focused uh, decision. I couldn't find a job <laughs> during the financial crisis. So I thought, okay, grad school is, is a nice option. The idealistic part about um, my choice was that I really wanted to go into public service. I, and I didn't have any training, schooling, or uh, professional experience in that. Uh, that's the reason why I pursued the graduate degree. During my graduate studies is when I was able to get uh, job opportunities with the mayor's office in Philadelphia, which is where I'm from, which led me to the first lady's office, which led me to additional uh, positions in Washington, D.C. So in that aspect, it led to other career opportunities. That being said, the reason why I went to grad school in the first place is because my ultimate um, aspiration was to become a human rights lawyer, which today I currently, you know, clearly am not. So the advice I would give is with graduate school, just like undergraduate studies, it's an investment, time, finances, um, headspace. You are making a commitment in, in favor of, of your career goals and aspirations. So please just be cognizant of that and don't just go to grad school uh, or law school, medical school, MBA, whatever it is that you're considering, just because you need something to fill the time. Um, that being said, I loved grad school and I'm still friends with all the friends I made um, during that time. I don't love it as much as I loved Penn State. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I'm going to answer Megan's question. Thanks for the question, Megan. It's as a freshman, I am new to LinkedIn and other networking services. What is some advice on how to get started? Yeah, I, you know, LinkedIn is, as you all know, the, the, the Facebook, the Instagram, the Snapchat, whatever you want to call it, of the professional world. It's another way to build and uh, hone in on your branding. If you're new, Lo and behold, don't worry, your network is going to naturally grow. You can start by sending requests to your classmates. Uh, doesn't have to be all of your classmates, just the ones you're, you're, you're close with or those who you uh, think you'll, you'll continue staying in touch with through your career journey. 
now I, I know I just compare LinkedIn with the other social media platforms, but something I will note is please be protective of your LinkedIn profile. It's not something you use <laughs> to um, be socially connected with all of your friends. It, it's a way for you to um, establish connections with people who are already in your professional network or those you want to be connected to. Uh, and Megan and others who are planning to use LinkedIn as a tool, when you start uh, with your first job, second job, et cetera, go ahead and start adding your connections with the colleagues that you come across. It may seem scary at times, but nine out of 10 uh, situations, people are going to accept your request. And then you never know who you'll be able to meet through your existing network. Um, the, the third plug I'll make for LinkedIn is, in fact, with the Amex opportunity, I actually LinkedIn messaged the recruiter. I had already been connected with somebody at Amex, so it wasn't as creepy as me just <laughs> reaching out to someone I may not have known, but that really helped get my resume on top of the pile and at least screened and viewed for the interviewers of the position I'm in right now. Um, so all of these practical tidbits can come along by utilizing the tool. Just use it well is something I would counsel. Great advice. I think LinkedIn is a great resource in networking management for sure. Um, you know, we had an event last night with recruiters talking about virtual recruiting and um, interviewing and the like, and half of them linked, sent me a link and request afterwards. Um, that it's powerful amongst recruiters. So for the students here, um, connecting with them at information sessions, connecting with them at spring career days or impact fair, which are all coming up virtually this semester, you know, take that next step and, and send them a message afterwards on LinkedIn, make it personal, have a touch point to what your conversation was. So perhaps they'll, they'll remember um, you specifically um, and not the mass of students that were in front of them, but um, definitely take advantage of it and make sure your LinkedIn is up to date um, before doing so. Um, and a professional picture is always a good idea too. <laughs> Uh, what it, obviously All great the, pieces of advice. Yes, <laughs> um, we've seen some things. <laughs> so um, obviously the whole point of this workshop is the idea of exploring a liberal arts degree and all the things you can do with it and how to, how to market that and, and really the paths that are available. In your path itself, uh, Stephanie, you've probably, you've worked with so many diverse people and, and, and seen so many backgrounds. Um, where has liberal arts stood out to you in, as a supervisor working with people or um, in a team collaborating with others? How has that liberal arts skill set um, been evident in those situations? Yeah, I think with a liberal arts degree, the best part about it is you can apply it on any given day with anything you are doing. Um, I, I can. I want to speak specifically to the experiences I've had because I don't want to generalize for anyone on the call. But for me, for example, uh, there are certain classes I had for one of my majors that at the time didn't seem relevant. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid, um, and this may resonate with some of you, I was afraid, you know, am I really spending my time wisely? Did I really make the right choice on choosing this major when? It doesn't seem like I could really practice this skill set or this kind of project in the real world. Absolutely, absolutely, I could. I still take some of the lessons I've learned from my liberal arts, uh, all three of the degrees I have, um, to be successful in, in the jobs I have held, including the one I have now. Um, and the one other thing I'll add is. Remember, it's great to be specific, but the more specific your skill sets, um, the more limited you might be in terms of your opportunities. If you look at the roles I've played, you know, um, a policy think tank, a mayor's office, the White House, uh, a campaign, now corporate America, it's all over the place. And the jobs I've held have certainly been a very diverse array of tasks that I've had to embark on. Um, and I, I truly believe it's because of my liberal arts degrees that I'm able to, that I was able to pursue them. Perfect. 
perfect. And that's why we're glad to have you here to talk about this. <laughs> Um, we're, I want to be con conscious of your time, Stephanie. I know you have a meeting. Um, what, what final words of advice or uh, for, from our first year students that are here on the call to those that are getting ready to navigate the world outside of Penn State as seniors, what, what's some final advice do you have for them um, to take advantage of now and in the future? Sure. Uh, so I'm happy to provide some final advice. I will just address one more question I got from Christian, who's mentioning that she doesn't want to aspire graduate school and she doesn't have experience in the field she is in. Um, and she is an econ major, doesn't know what she wants to do with her degree. Uh, first of all, Christian, I can totally relate. <laughs> As I mentioned, I didn't pursue any of the three degrees I got. Um, and then I know I went the grad school route and you're saying you don't want to do that. Uh, for me, it came down to exploring internships. I know even getting an internship these days um, is not, it may not be simple or not be uh, an easy path, but it, it, there is a pathway to it. Uh, a lot of companies and organizations are still offering unpaid and in some cases paid internships. So that might be a nice way for you to figure out what it is you want to do. Um, Maybe it won't turn into a long-term gig, but at least it allows you to explore what you've learned. And uh, practically speaking, it really helps expand your network, which I think is always a, a plus. I've done internships where I use my supervisor at that experience to write me a letter of recommendation for my next gig. And that's what catapulted me to um, a future opportunity. Hope that's, a, hope that's helpful. Um, and just jumping off of that, in terms of final advice, uh, number one, don't lose heart. I, I know right now, uh, as I've mentioned a couple of times, these are very, uh, it's, it's an unprecedented era that we are in. But the good news about that is you're able to um, be part of history. We are into your part of history in the making and it'll allow you to be more resilient and for you to face other challenges that are going to seem really minuscule compared to the what we're going through right now as a whole human society. Uh, number two is don't be afraid to reach out to people in your network. Uh, I can't emphasize that enough. People get scared and nervous and anxious about reaching out, but no, if ever there was a time to reach out to folks for help or advice, um, it's now and, and they'll all understand. And if you guys want to LinkedIn me, I, I, I'm, I'm happy to continue the conversation on that. Um, and then finally, what I would advise is have fun. Have fun with your career. Uh, I did a lot of things throughout my career, a lot of things outside of the, the opportunities I have listed, just so I could learn more. I could stay hungry. Um, one of the things I've heard from my previous boss is he appreciates people who give 100% but you always give a thousand percent. And hearing something like that, hopefully it resonates with some people on this call or it will once you, once you start entering the real world, it's not as scary as you think it is, um, is what will keep you motivated, uh, what will keep you humble and what will keep you going. So thank you very much for having me today. I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. Stephanie, thank you so much for your time and your generosity and sharing wonderful advice. It was, it was a great workshop. I also want to send a special thanks out to Dean Lang who joined us. We appreciate your time too um, and sharing with the students um, education here in the career week. Um, Stephanie, we look forward to connecting with you in the future and another plug for the alumni mentor program. There's a, there's a lot out there that are willing to help. So feel, feel free to take advantage of that link I shared in the chat. So. Thank you all for being here. Enjoy the rest of the day. We hope you join us later for uh, further workshops. Um, and please feel free to reach out to us to schedule a career coaching appointment um, to talk about all the things that Stephanie mentioned today. All right. Thank you all so much. Stay safe. Thank you, Katie. Thank you so much, Stephanie.